So uh, how to create a campaign. I'm, I'm just gonna go ahead and, and, and break down um, the difference between a campaign, ad set, and ad, okay? So campaign, now this is where you choose your marketing objective. You would usually have one campaign per offer. Your ad set, now this is where you choose how much you're gonna spend a day. And as I said, this depends on whether you're doing um, campaign budget optimization or at, um, at your, you're, doing, uh, you're setting the budget at the ad set level, okay? But I'll, I'll go into that in just a second. But this is where you uh, set how much you're gonna spend a day, where do you want it to show up, and who do you want your ads to be served to. Next thing is ad. This is exactly what your users will see on their desktop and phones. It is composed of images, video, uh, text, a headline, and a call to action. So here's an example right here of what, you know, here you might have a cold campaign. Within that, you might have, you know, anywhere from three to, I mean, even 50 ad sets. Uh, and then within those ad sets, usually we have around three to five different ads. Now, what Facebook will do is in the first, let's say three hours or six hours or 12 hours, it will give them all even distribution, the ads. And then based on which ones are performing best, they'll take that small sample size, they'll extrapolate that, and then they'll assign higher budgets to that. So Facebook is actually optimizing that for you within the ad set level. Now, to create a campaign, you'll need to go through the ads manager section of your business manager. Again, I've left a link to this in the description, but you can also access this by clicking on the three lines at the top left-hand corner and clicking through. Make sure you use the drop-down menu in the top left-hand corner to choose the correct ad account you wanna advertise on. Next, you need to press the green create button. You'll be sent to this page where you can choose an objective for your campaign. Again, the only two objectives you'll ever really need to use are conversions and lead generation. In this training, we're gonna be focusing on conversions rather than lead generation. However, I've also filmed another video where I go more in depth on lead generation. That is the three hour behemoth free training. So if you want some more extended free training uh, for Facebook uh, and you want especially uh, some more extended free training for uh, real estate agents, for gyms, for restaurants, for this, that, uh, local businesses, check out that free training in the description. I actually give you guys an entire six page plug and play at the end as a bonus for staying until the end. So just a little heads up. Now, creating conversions. Conversions come in two shapes and sizes. The first is standard events. Now, if you're an e-commerce company or work with one, when you integrate your pixel, it'll automatically create standard events such as add to cart and purchase. Now, we often use custom conversions for our clients as this allows us to track a number of elements of the campaign. Setting one up is easy. You just need to feed Facebook with the URLs that correspond to the event. For example, tell Facebook that you know once a user uh, reaches the thank you page to downloading a free guide, they have completed a conversion. So just to drill down on that point a little more, the main difference between a custom conversion and a standard event is a custom conversion is based off of the URL, okay? So once someone goes to a specific URL, you have told Facebook that they have achieved a certain custom conversion. With standard event, it's based on code. So for example, like let's say someone purchased a product, you will put the um, standard event code in the purchase page, okay? And then based on that code, then Facebook will know that they have uh, accomplished a specific outcome. With us, we do both. First, we like to be even more sure in our tracking. Now, custom conversions are way easier to set up because there's no code that is involved. It's basically just based off of the URL, but standard events are definitely more accurate. We've, we've found that. Now, in terms of creating your campaign, go back to Ads Manager. Now, you should choose a conversion objective, give it a name and click through. Here's where you'll let Facebook know which conversion you would like the campaign to optimize for. Next, scroll down and choose your audience. Now, Facebook offers three types of audiences. The most common is saved audiences, and that's simply where you choose targeting based off of uh, interest, demographics, and locations. You can create one for each ad or just save one to use it over again and again. Next is custom audiences. Now, these audiences can be created from a number of different sources, such as people who have visited your website, uh, people who have engaged with your Instagram page, or even watched one of your videos. Now this is used in the retargeting element of a campaign. Remember I told you we have three different campaigns, um, cold, retargeting, and testing. So as I said, that'll be used in the retargeting campaign. Now, you know, you're, you're gonna wanna target audiences that are already familiar with your brand within that campaign. Now finally, there are lookalike audiences without being overly simple. Just in our experience, these don't work anymore. Actually, I, I will make a little caveat on that. All the way from April of 2018 until all, the rest of 2018 and the rest of 2019, look like audiences did not work. They did not work for us. One thing that I do wanna say is in 2020, we found with our clients that there's actually been a little bit of a resurgence of look like audiences. So for any of you guys here who are, actually, I mean, if you're just starting to advertise, test it out. Like that's the thing, like we always test out some, I mean, we've with some of our clients, we literally try no targeting at all, just demographic targeting. Okay, and we, we like to test out like broad versus interest targeting versus look like, you know, we instead we, we like to try it. And what we found was in 2019, 2018 and 2019, look likes were dead. This year we found with some of our clients that look likes are actually making a bit of a resurgence.
So just a little caveat. Now it's time to choose your budget. Now there's no hard and fast rule for budgets, but know that spending like to be honest, any less than $500 on a campaign is unlikely to yield any results or give Facebook a chance to find you an audience. That's for cold. That is for retargeting. I mean, also you can spend like $5 a day on, uh, on a retargeting campaign uh, and it'll go to work. I'm saying more for cold. Now we recommend setting a daily budget and a limited schedule. Okay. Next, you'll need to choose the page you want to advertise on. If you've set up your pay, a business manager uh, properly, you'll see a list of Facebook pages and Instagram pages you can choose from. If you don't have an Instagram account associated with your page, Facebook will create a blank one to serve your advert on Instagram for you. Now, finally, it's time to get into your individual adverts. The two elements to successful advert are the creative and the copy. Now, the creative is just a fancy term for the image or video that accompany the advert. Now, at this point, I should stress again that I've spent a fair amount of money on Facebook over the years, and I'm yet to find a better combination than a simple image and great copy. With that in mind, let's look at these two examples. Now, one of the most common mistakes advertisers make is, well, trying to make their adverts look like adverts, okay? The one on the left is so obviously and so, um, it's so obnoxiously an advert and so intrusive in your newsfeed that you would automatically scroll away from it. Whereas the advert on the right uses simple lifestyle imagery and it looks so much better result. Food is one of the easiest things to promote on Facebook and Instagram because people wanna see it. Like the one on the right genuinely just looks like a, a food blog, okay? <laughs> Um, next up it's copy again, amateur advertisers like to use copy as a chance for them to flex their English language skills and come up with witty, pithy captions. You might think that you're clever, but the reality is you've written an advert and people don't like to read adverts. Okay. Compare the posts on the right to the one on the left. It looks far more like a viral post that one of your friends might share It intrigues you and makes you wonder why you are always so tired. You want to click continue. You want to see what the rest of it entails. Okay. It invokes an emotional response in the reader. Everyone is always tired for the most part, <laughs> and you'll be far more likely to purchase the weighted blanket than you would after reading the advert on the left. Okay. Remember your best night's sleep yet. The one on the left, it just, it doesn't do anything for you. Whereas like the one on the right, if I was scrolling through my newsfeed and I stopped and I saw there's only one way to fix your sleep and it's not by drinking herbal teas. I would click on that. I drink herbal tea. Like I drink a loose leaf chamomile tea from a place called T2 shout out T2. Um, and I drink that before bed. So if I saw this, like I'd be hooked in like this almost looks like a editorial, like um, a blog post, like that sort of thing. Okay. That's the main thing that you want to do is you want to avoid your ad looking like an ad. Also just a little ode to our philosophy about image and medium to long form copy. I don't even want to talk about the amount of times I've had some smart ass try to butt in and be like, no man, you got to try video ads. Like they perform way better. But like, cool. Awesome. If that's worked for you. I'm just telling you in my experience over the years, 90 to 95% of the ads that we run both for my clients and for myself personally are direct response style image with ne pretty much never a graphic on it and medium to long form copy with a really strong hook and headline. That's the way we do it. It works for us. If there's something else that works for you better. Cool. I'm just here to relay.